Yeah, I've been an APB user for uh, roughly 10 years. And the original uh, reason I sort of gravitated towards this, this mixer was that I, at that time, I, I was looking for uh, mixers that could have a lot of functionality, uh, but in a com as compact form as possible. And the reasoning for that is, is uh, for me, uh, to be able to, uh, for ergonomically, being able to reach the equipment for my live jams. When I do live jams, when I do uh, uh, so these one takes that are uh, the base of my compositions. So I was doing tons of research and uh, ended up finding uh, APB by, uh, uh, I don't really know how I, how I found it, but uh, uh, the uh, layout really uh, really was something uh, that was, I was looking for, uh, and even more so. I think I, there was some, some unexpected uh, features in there that I, I, was, uh, I was not expecting in that form factor, this really compact rack size. So uh, in the end, that's why I chose it. I think uh, f uh, what I liked the most is really how versatile it, it can be in different in different setups. So for me, uh, when I got the mixer, I uh, really used it uh, quite differently from what I what I do today. Uh, certainly, I wanted to have a decent uh, equalizer, so I, I needed to have a certain number of accents, etc. But uh, for me, the uh, some, one of the key uh, factors was also that it could, uh, that it did clipping well. Uh, I used mixer clipping quite a lot. And also that it was, uh, well, this is something that I discovered during my, my initial research was that there's a lot of under the hood configurations that, that can be changed uh, to really make the mixer work in a way that you want. how I record. This has actually changed for me over, over the years I've been using the mixer. So initially I was using uh, the buses exclusively to track through them. So I would group uh, stand, I would group instruments or group channels together and then record those into the interface. And just recently I've expanded uh, to a bigger interface which allows me to do uh, to actually have enough input channels so I can do direct out from uh, all of the, at least all of the mono channels and the stereo channels I still route through the groups. So I get somehow best of both worlds and I have the possibility to always the possibility to do grouping, to do, uh, to do busing if needed, but I also can start the compositional process very quickly because I have all of my sort of synths uh, at least the main ones I used mostly and, and my drum machines uh, always connected um, and ready to go. Sense on this desk, I use uh, primarily for uh, for uh, to send the signals to effect units, uh, either as mono channels to then maybe some mono or stereo pedal. Uh, the top uh, channels are, are mono, but I've also used the uh, channel five and six for for stereo sense as well. In those cases that I, that I wanted to retain a, a stereo. Um, stereo separation or, or full stereo, stereo uh, signal going into uh, an effect box. This could be, for example, the uh, hologram microcosm where uh, the, it is inherently a stereo, uh, stereo effect. So I can use this mixer to send channels, uh, both stereo and mono channels, but with a sort of stereo uh, field uh, intact. Uh, and in addition to that, I've also used the, uh, the effect sends because they can be configured uh, both pre and post uh, EQ and also pre and post uh, fader. 
uh, I've used them uh, as sort of alternative groups uh, to send to maybe distortion units and that kind of stuff. So my favorite effects units, oh, that, that changes all the time. I would say uh, among the, my, my, the, the one effect that is uh, classic for me a little bit is this one behind me. It's an Ensonic DP4, which uh, I think for whoever is sort of a studio head knows what it is. It's a, it's a bit of like a, a even tied for, 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 uh, for working class people. It's a great multi-effects from the, I think, late uh, 80s, early 90s, and it's configured in, in like a two mono, two mono in, two stereo out. It's a parallel uh, multi-effect. It actually has four engines, but they can be sort of configured in, in multiple ways. And the way I have it set up is that one, um, send one and two, or at least currently I have it set up that way, is that sends one and two go into each of the, each of the um, uh, two inputs, and then four outputs or two stereo outputs are going to my, to my interface. And besides that, I have a plethora of, of um, pedals from, uh, there's too, too many to mention. It really depends on the, on the day, which one uh, I prefer. pleasant surprise is that the mute switches don't click and this this I use all the time when recording live jams. In the equalizers on the mixer I use both as a sort of sculpting creative tool but also as for, for problem problem solving um, and I like that it, that it allows me to go really aggressively when needed uh, but also works quite surgically with the two uh, the parametric bands, um, which are quite useful. Uh, and in addition, and this is also one of the features that is not really expected in this format, is the uh, uh, sweepable high pass filter on all channels. Usually on most mixers, even more expensive mixers, is a, uh, it's just a switch sort of to remove some excessive uh, low end. Here, the high pass filter can be used a lot more creatively. So uh, I really, really liked it. It's one of those things I wasn't really looking for necessarily, but a pleasant surprise. Because for me, uh, a mixer is not only about mixing, it's also about sound sculpting. And for example, uh, mixer clipping is really an integral part of the sound of a mixer. So maybe that's not how it's intended to be used, but for me, it's an integral part of, of the functionality of a mixer. How does it sound if I go into the reds, if I, if I massage the circuits?